For the last six months, I've been quite unlucky. I mean, my business is growing quite fast and the opportunities we've been getting are insane. For the first time in my life, I can confidently say that I see filmmaking as my main source of income. However, this came at a cost. A lot of the projects I've had recently required me to use bigger, more professional gear, which meant that the quality I provided my clients with was indeed better, but all of this heavy gear I was carrying resulted in me having lots of back problems. It wasn't bad until 28th of June 2021, where I collapsed on the ground from intense back pain while going on a shoot and the pain was so bad that I had to be on bed duty for more than a week, eating nothing but extreme painkillers. This experience showed me that I really have to be more careful and uh, I decided to strip down my setup so that this never happens again. I know some of my friends are having back issues as well for this very same reason and that's not something you want to be fighting with when you're in your early 20s. That's why I decided to sell all of my bigger gimbals and left just two solid, portable and powerful gimbals in my arsenal. DJI RSC2 and Juin Weeble 2. And that's exactly what we're gonna be comparing in this video. Enjoy. After getting juicy b-roll shots of both gimbals, I wanted Rainis to try out the underslung mode on the DJI RC2 because I find it quite uh, interesting to say the least. Check this out. I'm gonna ask for Rainis to somehow get it back to the pistol grip mode, so good luck Rainy. I think I have, I have done it, but look. Oh. And then... <laughs> oh, this is so weird. <laughs> So what's next? Wait, I'm gonna put it like this. Wait, hold up. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm close, close. There we go. Was that a wonderful experience? Totally. I mean, they tried, but it feels so weird. <laughs> Every time I do it, it feels like illegal. I, I think you can get used to it, but I don't know, just every time, you know, unlocking something and then doing this and... It's, and, and then this pressing part is and, and this part is exposed yeah, to like rain. Yeah, it's stuff. exposed to rain and dust and everything. And then you have to do this, and that's kind of cool. I like how smooth it is, but I don't know. It's just like I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> like why? <laughs> Without any further ado, we decided to have a bit of a challenge. Since we still needed to warm up, we gave each other 10 minutes to get a couple of b-roll shots to see how both of these gimbals perform in extreme run-and-gun type of situations. So, your thoughts? Jesus, the time passed so quickly I barely got any b-roll shots of the forest itself, only rain is walking, so enjoy that. Uh, honestly, uh, pretty surprised because I have balanced this gimbal to 28 millimeters, right? And as you saw from a lot of tests, I also did 75 millimeters and I did not rebalance, I just, you know, whooped it up here and that's it. Uh, some things I did notice um, was when I went 75 millimeters and when I tried these super low uh, orbiting shots, sometimes it was a little bit jerky. It was really difficult to get a smooth shot. I mean, obviously, it's because this gimbal is not balanced at all. Check this out. I'm going to turn it off on 75 millimeters. It's just, it just falls down. It's like not balanced at all, which is fine. But still, a little bit jerky on the 75 millimeters, yeah. But felt good, felt good. Really like this underslung mode. It just makes everything so much easier. Love it. Your turn, Rainy. Enjoy. I'm not up for that brief briefcase mode. <laughs> Bear in mind that this is Rainy's first time using this gimbal. This meant that not only he hadn't got used to the gimbal, but the settings weren't probably adjusted to his liking as well. But hey, he still managed to get some banger shots. It feels
feels a little smoother, I'd say, like like it eases in the movements, I think, a little bit better. But uh, the problem was that um, I think the dead band settings and the smoothness is not really adjusted, so it was really sensitive. So when I was doing my follow shots, I had to be really careful, but uh, I think it turned out great. Now, <laughs> again, I didn't use the briefcase mode. It just takes too much time to go from this to there. So this is how I do the low angle shots and it's so much more convenient than doing the fucking briefcase thing. I don't get it. <laughs> uh, it would take me like, I don't know, 30 seconds to set it up and that's just not worth it. But overall, pretty good. I, I really like the feel in the hand. The grip is really good. I like the, the rubber here. It feels, I think DJI gimbals feel a little bit more premium than Science. Good gimbal, but briefcase mode, thumbs down. If we're talking about specs, these gimbals are very similar in terms of features. Both have all modes you can think of, you know, follow mode, pan follow mode, lock, POV, vortex, portrait mode. Both have the underslung mode, both are quite portable, both offer a lot of customizability, but the biggest differences are in performance. Weeble 2 has way stronger motors, which means it can handle 3.3 kg payloads, whereas the DJI can handle up to 3 kg, but from our test it already starts struggling at 2 kilograms. However, while Weeble 2 weighs around 1.45 kilograms, the DJI only weighs 1.2 kilograms, which might not be a big deal, but it's actually a massive difference. Another major difference is setting custom modes. While you can set three custom modes on the DJI, on the Weeble 2 you unfortunately cannot do that. The DJI also comes with a dope quick release system, whereas the Weeble 2 doesn't. However, Weeble 2 has an awesome 2.89 inch colorful touch display, which works really well and this means that you don't need to go in the phone app to change the motor settings, which is even better. And last but not least, the price. Hello. I like money. DJI retails for 429 euros, which in USD is I don't know. <laughs> while the Weeble 2 retails for 579 euros. That's a whopping 150 euro difference, so choose wisely. Now we're gonna go into the, uh, what, what, what is it called in the English? Swamp. The swamp, yeah. And we're just gonna have 30 minutes to ourselves to get like enough B-roll to create a little story and then we're both gonna do a little edit to unleash the creativity with this tool, so to speak. We interrupt this program to bring you- Ladies and gentlemen, I am about to present you one of the craziest features. Well, it's not really a feature, it's just a thing I found out. But uh, yeah, it's, it's my favorite thing about the Weeble 2. Okay, so I have balanced this setup pretty okay. Let's turn it on. Everything is good. Works as expected. Very nice, very cool. In Austria, in a lot of the hikes, I was just super tired, right? And I didn't want to switch the lenses and then rebalance the gimbal and uh, I don't know, I just didn't want to deal with it. So what I did is uh, this. I took off the lens from the gimbal while it's still on. No, no biggie. Took another lens, which weighs completely differently. Screwed it on. While the gimbal is still on. Bada bim, bada boom, bada bim. Do you hear any motor noises? No, I don't. Yeah, this is so cool if you're shooting with primes. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh... <laughs> Nailed it! After that, it was Rainus's time to shine, and the following footage you're seeing is his masterpiece. I think in some shots you can see him struggling a bit, but that's why I asked him to help me out with this project, because I like seeing him struggle like this. Love you, Rainy. So my thoughts about this gimbal after using it for 45 minutes. So overall, it's quite good. I, I really like the grip. I think it's much better actually than Weeble 2. The materials are really like rigid and uh, I like the like uh, these adjustment knobs. They're super comfortable and everything. One thing that I that it's kind of maybe a little bit of a deal breaker actually is uh, most of the times I like to go into the pan follow mode 
So I would bring the gimbal down like this, and then um, I would tilt upwards so I can get like an, a low upwards angle, if that's how you call it. So then I could like orbit and everything. But the problem is for some weird reason, if I use the joystick, like I can't go up. Like this is the limit, it can't go past this point. So you can bring it down, or if I bring it like this, so you can bring it up. So it's weird that it does that, given the fact that, you know, now, like uh, I did it manually without the joystick and now it's here. So I don't know why, why is it like that? See, the joystick does nothing at this point. All right, next thing. Um, I actually gave the briefcase mode a chance. So it's not as bad maybe as we said it. We kind of roasted it a little bit too much. So it's not actually that bad. The good thing about it is that it's quite smooth. It's actually very smooth when you do these low angle shots. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? I had this earlier before as well. For some reason, this motor just suddenly locked. Like, I don't remember doing that. I think that was like from, I don't know, it's weird. So it overall, it's very smooth actually. And um, ergonomics wise, it's actually not that bad. It feels really comfortable like doing these pan shots. Doing these follow shots with the uh, briefcase mode, it does feel a little bit too front heavy. Uh, one thing though, uh, I don't know how this part, how durable is this part, because right now, for example, it's exposed to rain. Uh, one thing that's kind of annoying is when you're in the briefcase mode and, I don't know, somebody calls you or you need to, like, put the gimbal down, you can't really do that. Like, like if I, if I go and get my tripod here, like, <laughs> there's no way I can put it down, right? So I have to get back here and put it like that and then put it down. It's, it's not that bad, but it just takes a little bit more time. It's just that one more step that you have to worry about and that's kind of annoying. And uh, like you saw before in that little fail that where the gimbal just went, uh, woohoo. Uh, I had this a couple of times actually when I go back from the briefcase mode on the original position and I don't know why it ends up like in this position, for example, like that's weird. And sometimes I do this and like two out of three times, or maybe one out of three times, it actually repositions upside down. I had that a couple of times, and then there's really no way to getting it back. You just have to forcefully turn it around. So, like I said, the briefcase mode, it's fine, but there's just these little steps that you have to worry about. And, and, uh, let's, say, and let's say after shooting that, I would be back in this normal position and then I was filming like this and suddenly it just popped open because I forgot to lock it. You see, one more thing to worry about. But yeah, overall, uh, overall, I mean, it's a solid gimbal. Nothing really bad to say it except uh, some of these little nitpicks. So let's start with the DJI. Yes, it is way more portable and mobile, which I do like. So if space is crucial for you and if you want something super lightweight, then I think uh, DJI RC2 is your best option. Also, when it comes to customizability, I think DJI uh, takes the cake here because in the app, uh, you can, um, you know, create your own personal presets, which is really cool. And I wish uh, Julian would do the same. Uh, let's say one preset is like um, for filming sports, very responsive, very fast. The second one is very slow and peaceful. And, and the third one is just somewhere in the middle, I suppose. In Mexico, when I was working with the RS2, I loved that feature. You know, when I was filming B-roll, when, uh, you know, where uh, people moving, cars moving, I just put it on M1, you know, and whipped my gimbal left and right, and then when I needed to do talking heads with a bit of movement, I just selected M2, and I could do super slow and minimalistic moves with the gimbal. I love it. Ergonomics, DJ takes the cake once again. What I like about DJI is its approach to minimalistic button placement. They don't have that many knobs, that many whistles, you know, it's just like a couple of buttons here and there and that's it. You just go in the app, create your own presets and that's it, boom, you're done. I love the power on button, it's in a super convenient placement. The trigger just feels good. Shh, listen. It's so minimalistic, but I like it. And it's very responsive, it has that pleasant kind of a clicky sound which I really enjoy. You know, it's all about the little things and that's what I like about the DJI. They, they just really nailed down those little things. Uh, and of course, ease of use, I would say DJI wins as well. Now it was my turn to play around with the Julian Weeble 2 a bit and get some dope footage. Since I've used this gimbal a lot, I went in the swamp with full confidence and was ready to nail rays.
What do I think about the Weeble 2? I think Weeble 2 is a beast when it comes to performance. Okay, listen, this is uh, very important. A lot of people, when they um, first start using gimbals, they just think gimbals are supposed to be used in very dynamic environments. You know, quickly run here, quickly run there, crouch here, jump here, and stuff like that. But uh, actually, no. Uh, I think you should learn to use a gimbal in many different ways. I use it as a slider, as a tripod. So. That's why the performance is very, very important for me. I use gimbals mostly for minimalistic moves. I rarely ever, like, yes, I do sometimes in dynamic projects, you know, like move very quickly with a gimbal, but 90% of the times I use it to get very, very slow shots, very, just very minimalistic shots like you saw here, you know, just all these detail shots with a little bit of orbiting around it, just lock mode and uh, just a little bit of tilting up, panning and stuff like that. And this is where the Weeble 2 shines. Like, I balanced the uh, lens, the Tamron 28 to 75 on 28 millimeters. Even when I went to 75 millimeters and, you know, used it in the underslung mode, I was still able to get fantastic slow movement out of the gimbal and only sometimes I felt this little bit of a shake uh, because it's not balanced properly, you know, but uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It's all about the minimalistic moves as well and that's the key thing I look when getting a gimbal. Yeah, so motor strength and performance, Weeble 2 hands down. Also, it has that flippy screen, which is great because I hate using the apps and I can just uh, change the settings on the go, which is amazing, love it. One more thing which actually shocked me. My most used mode in a gimbal is actually the lock mode, believe it or not. And uh, the lock mode on the Weeble 2 is fantastic. I love it. It's, it's like, when I move forward, it never drifts because with all the previous gimbals I've tried, it can be Feiju Tech, DJI, Junyin, uh, what else have I tried, uh, Ciroi gimbals, all of them drift a little bit to the left or to the right. And I'm happy to say this is the first gimbal I've used which does not do that, and I'm so happy for it because that's my most used mode. And I think from all those shots you saw previously, you saw that pretty much 80% of my shots were in the lock mode. I love it, it's just, so solid. Overall, we think both gimbals are fantastic and have their advantages and disadvantages. But to sum it up, if you want a gimbal that is light, portable, a bit cheaper, easy to use with a lot of mode customizability, can handle basic setups, go for the DJI RC2. If you're looking for performance and something that has really, really, and I mean really strong motors, can handle heavier setups, and you can change the gimbal settings on the fly without using an app, go for the Weeble 2. Alright, we hope that this video made your decision on which gimbal to buy a bit easier and we also hope that you enjoyed this video. Stay awesome and you know the drill. Peace out.